Yeah, I know. That's not it. I got it up ahead, 12 o'clock, keep going. Okay, Jamie, thank you. Go ahead, Rosa, go ahead. Right turn. Okay, Rosa, is one of the, is either of the patients uh, or both of the patients uh, deputy or deputies? Oh, he's riding that guy's bumper. Oh, look at that. He hit him. He hit that guy. He was right in the bumper. He hit that SUV. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us on NBCLA. This is Gil Levis and News Chopper 4 Bravo, along with my pilot, Chris Sanders. We're over a high-speed pursuit. Right now, we're in the Chino area. You can see the red car here. That's the pursuit vehicle. It was involved in a hit and run with a uh, sheriff's deputy. LA County Fire responded to that crash scene. Let's keep going, Chris. Are they not letting us cross? Um, we're dealing with some air traffic out here uh, for the Chino Airport. They're holding us in our position right here, just north of the airfield. That's why the car is going away from us. We're trying to work to get across the airfield right now, but the air, airfield is holding us on the north side. There's the car. It's going to set it up for a right-hand turn. Chris. We just got our clearance through. That's the, the car there. It's uh, got away from us a little bit because of that air traffic that we had to go through. We are now through it, and uh, we're going to be going uh, westbound right now on Kimball. So some dangerous driving out here in this pursuit. Again, it was wanted for a hit and run on a deputy vehicle in the city of industry area. That... Uh, happened uh, about 20 minutes ago. The ground units that were in pursuit, they pulled back, they've gone into surveillance mode. So the uh, ground units are staying way back. The airship overhead is tracking the vehicle. The car, as you saw just a, a few minutes ago, hitting a car that uh, he was tailgating. Here he goes, wrong side of the road. Oh, look at that. A, a van stopped in the and the double yellows there. He had to go around that van because he had nowhere to go. Fortunately, uh, that oncoming traffic was far enough away. He was able to get back on the uh, right side of the street. 
Kimball Avenue and uh, El Prado. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Look at this. He's got cross traffic here. He's going to try to go through. No, he's going to make a right turn at El Prado. He's going to go northbound on El Prado. So again, the want is hit and run on a, a deputy vehicle. In that accident, we're hearing now that from LA County Fire, two people were transported to the hospital. We're working on getting confirmation if that was a uh, deputy that was transported or injured. He's, here he goes crossing the, the center lanes into the wrong side. He's got a big rig right there. Goes right by the big rig in the slow lane. He's going to stay in that slow lane. Oh, it's a curve too. This is so dangerous. He has to swerve around. Oh man, another car coming around that curve. A blind curve for those people coming at him. All of a sudden, there he is in their face. And fortunately for those people going southbound, they did not hit him, but it was a close call. A couple times there, he went against a big rig even. But now he stopped in the uh, turn pocket. We'll see if he turns or not. Again, no units behind the driver right now. They have the airship overhead. The uh, sheriff's units have pulled back and have gone into surveillance mode. Here he goes. He's going to try to squeeze by that big rig. A FedEx truck. Oh, no, he hit that car. He hit the car. He pushed his way right through. Oh, he's going to hit. He hit that pickup truck. So we're, we're counting like three or four cars here. I do copy, Jamie. I do copy. Go ahead, Jamie. Go ahead. Okay. One more time, Tim. Sorry, I got a bunch of scanners. Yeah, I did. I I heard the desk. Yeah, um, I have the IP up now. I do hear you. Yes. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Still Chino. Still Chino. Yeah. Coming at us, Chris. We can we can hold here, yeah. If you can hold here. Michael, it's that red car in the center of your screen right now. The pursuit's been going on for almost a half hour. This is uh, uh, the one on this vehicle is for hit and run on a deputy, a LA County Sheriff's deputy. The uh, pursuit started after that uh, accident. It was in the city of industry when that happened. I can tell you that LA County Fire has responded to that crash and has transported two people. We're trying to get word on if uh, any of those two people that were injured were the, uh, the sheriffs involved. After that crash, another sheriff's unit was hit. It was a sergeant that was uh, tra trailing in this pursuit was hit by the car as well. Since then, the vehicles traveled on surface streets from the city of industry all the way into Chino, where we're at right now. High speeds on Grand Avenue, 70 to 80 miles an hour at times. But right now we are on Eucalyptus and Norton, as you see the car continuing to go uh, in that direction. It's a westbound direction right now. There are now about six, I'm counting about eight units now in trail. They were in tracking mode, but they just went back into uh, act, active mode here as the uh, units are engaging the driver once again. He has hit multiple cars on surface streets. He's pushed through intersections, hitting cars. He's actually gone the wrong side of the road on a curve. And uh, that was a very dangerous situation. It was a, a, a curved road, and he was going head on onto uh, uh, into big rigs and uh, other cars that were coming on that street. So a very dangerous situation here, this person desperate to get away. They also, one more thing, they mentioned that uh, this driver might be possibly uh, under the influence. So we have uh, uh, many uh, issues here with this driver. He's hit met multiple cars trying to get away from the officers.
No, it didn't work at all. Uh, th in fact, they actually pulled off to see if the driver would calm down in his driving. He was erratic driving on the wrong side of the road, uh, but it didn't, it didn't stop. So they, they actually re-engaged right after he was on that curved road when he almost hit multiple cars going head on onto those cars. It was a two lane street and here we go. Here he's in traffic and we saw him push his way through. In fact, he was very aggressive with an SUV when they were in tracking mode. He got behind that SUV and didn't like the fact that the SUV was going slow. And then he bumped him as he went by, bumped that SUV. So uh, here we are in more traffic and he, you're gonna see some more ag aggressive driving here. They're right on him. You see there's one unit right there. Let me come out wide. And there's about eight that I counted, eight units or more even uh, in this pursuit. I don't want to pull out too far. Here he goes. He's on the move again. So he's got a pocket there in that slow or in the fast lane, and he's going to go by those trucks. Again, units blocking ahead of th but And also I can tell you that they're, they're willing to do the pit maneuver. We'll see if they do it. They've called for it earlier, and they decided not to. Here's the uh, 71 freeway. And he's not taking that 71. The second time he's crossed the 71 has not ch uh, chosen to take that freeway. So he's going to continue now westbound on Grand Avenue, going back the direction he came. I see them being very aggressive with this driver to try to pit him and, and bring it to an end. Uh, I can hear them talking about it right now, so we'll see if that happens. They're going to try it at the best possible moment, uh, the safest moment for everyone involved. Oh, no. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you saw him go up against that uh, truck with a trailer, and then that unit right behind him tried to do a, a pit when he was going, but he was going a little too slow, so it didn't work. Uh, but here he goes, continuing westbound still on Grand, and the driver just desperate to get away, trying to go through that uh, traffic that was turning in front of him and just pushed his way right through up, in, up against that, that trailer. Unbelievable. So we're still in uh, Chino Hills, and he's heading back towards the Diamond Bar area. Uh, the road here, this Grand Avenue, is kind of like a, a mini freeway. It has uh, multiple lanes. It does have traffic signals, but we do we have flown over this area before, and we see cars traveling at almost freeway speed. So uh, we know that the, this driver can continue on this road for quite a while, a lot of cross streets and a lot of signals, but uh, it does have a... a you're, you are able to go at a higher, higher rate of speed, 45, 50 miles an hour on this road. Yeah, it seems like that. He, you know, the driver trying anything and everything to get away. We've seen that, Carolyn, in this pursuit, and at times weaving. So, uh, and it's not it's not clear if the uh, driver uh, that may be under that influence of uh, some of some substance might be uh, having an issue with uh, controlling the car. Yes, we're still in uh, Chino Hills. This is uh, Grand Avenue approaching Dudley. And here, we might see the pit here. Chris, let's try to line up with the street. But we're going to see a pit right here behind the trees. Hopefully, it does. there it is. There's the pit. Spinning him out of control. Oh, he's got the control, though. He gained the control back of the car. And it's not enough to, to drop him out of control there or uh, lose control of the car completely and stall it. So he's going to continue. So again, the pit maneuver there as uh, the... Uh, Police try to do it, and they might do it again. Here we go. He's coming up again, and we'll see if they get it right. Oh, almost there. Yes. No, you don't. You don't. So they pulled back. They're going to bring another unit. You see the unit switching there. That, that one unit might have had a problem with their car. They're going to bring in that other unit to try the pit again. So, yeah, you're right, though. The speeds we're seeing... Uh, well, let's come in tight here and get an accurate uh, count on his uh, miles per hour here. We're looking at right now, that's way too fast. 
the speedometer is changing there a little bit. Again, he's going up and down hills here. This is a, a hilly area of uh, uh, of Grand Avenue, so we're seeing uh, the driver trying to maintain an almost that pit almost worked, but it almost threw him into the uh, oncoming lanes. I'm sorry, Michael, I missed part of that. I was getting some information from our desk, uh, Rosa Ardez, Ordaz, uh, reporting that uh, one of the people that were injured in that sheriff's uh, accident, and the initial accident, was a sheriff's, and they, that sheriff's was, uh, that sheriff or deputy was transported to a local hospital. The condition is unknown. Uh, as far as the car right now, you were asking me about the, the safety of that? Let me come out. Uh, we have a bunch of trees in our way. We're trying to get on the other side of the uh, pursuit. And uh, you're seeing they're not too far back. So they did pull back. Now there's a, a different, we had a white, uh, all white unit in there. That might have been a Chino Hills unit that might have been involved uh, with the pursuit. But uh, right now, uh, it looks like it might be the deputies that are taking the lead once again on the pursuit. Uh, CHP has been notified, but the car really hasn't been on uh, surface streets. So uh, at this point, at these speeds, I don't see them doing the pit. It's just way too fast. I believe he's downhill right now on uh, Grand Avenue. So that's going to be a factor as well. Right turn. It sure was. I mean, uh, they almost had the car stalled. It almost stalled out. It looked like the, the driver was just barely able to get back the control of the car and keep it running. So uh, that's unfortunate for the officers because it almost worked, and uh, it was a dangerous move there with it going across lanes, almost into the, the oncoming lanes. Yeah, for sure. A, a very dangerous situation with all the cars that are out here. And uh, when we were in uh, the Chino area, we saw this car hit multiple other vehicles just because. You know, it's, it's really unbelievable. He was not, uh, he didn't have units behind him at the time. He went against an SUV that he, for some reason, didn't like the fact that he was going slow, uh, stayed behind that car. And then when he passed, he just sideswiped him and kept going. That sideswipe almost knocked this pursuit vehicle out of control. Here he is coming up to a red light and he's got uh, a car there that's blocking. He's going to have to go up on the curb if he needs to move or he might, as we saw before, shove his way through the car. High power. Yeah, sorry about that. The car stopped. I'm going to come out to a wider shot. You see the units giving this driver some space there. He's not right up on him, but look at how many units there. He's going to go on the gas. He's going to try that car there, that black car, getting out of the way, fortunately for that driver, uh, able to move. But here he comes up to, look at this. He's going to sandwich right through, and oh, and so unfortunate to see this happen because these drivers, ah, uh, it's so terrible. Just pushed his way right through. Awful. Yeah, that looks like an unmarked vehicle that might have been in the pursuit. We'll see. I don't know. It could be someone that just got involved, but you can see that move, that vehicle. He's going to go on the wrong side of the road, and he's pushing his way through again. That traffic, unbelievable. Oh, right up against that car. This might be it. I mean, he may not have anywhere to go. He doesn't have the muscle to push all those cars ahead of him. So you see that unmarked vehicle there? Yes, it's deputies that are uh, have their guns drawn, and we'll see what happens. People trying to get out of the way, desperately getting out of the way there. And that, that one car ahead of him just, I don't know if it stalled or just terrified to move. Yeah, for sure. And it's so unfortunate, but this, these uh, deputies here that are 
on the wrong side of the street there, made that move so that they could cover uh, anybody, any, any innocent driver there uh, that was in that mix. Absolutely. In fact, I'm going to zoom in and see if we can see that person, uh, what they're doing, because it could be that they just, uh, maybe they were injured. Uh, it's hard to see if that, oh, you see the arm of the driver there. It, it might be that the driver is just trying to hold him there. I don't know, but here he's on the move. He's going to move, and let's see if the car is disabled or not. Absolutely. So he may have done damage to the car. That front wheel, let's take a look here. It looks, well, he might be damaged there where he can't move. Uh, we're actually Diamond Bar right now. It's uh, Diamond Bar Boulevard and... Uh, it's, I'm getting the, oh, it's the uh, eastbound entrance to the 60 freeway where we're at. So Diamond Bar Boulevard and the 60 freeway is where it's stopped for now. Sure, because they, you know, as far as they know, they've just been in an accident by someone who was just, you know, being reckless. And they want to get the information and deal with uh, the incident as it is. But now a swarm of officers and deputies around uh, the incident here, now they know that now this is more than just a simple accident. Hey, Chris, I'm getting exhausted. So good, right there. Diamond Bar, Diamond Bar Boulevard and the 60 Freeway. Well, uh, good question. You know, there's so many units here. The street's blocked off. The vehicle appears to be disabled. And now that it's just a waiting game, they uh, could call for a SWAT team to come in if they need that. But that might be down uh, the road a little bit. We'll see what happens. They're going to try to, to negotiate this driver to come out and surrender peacefully. We, we're, we haven't heard during the entire pursuit if there was weapons in the vehicle. They don't. They're not. Uh, they haven't mentioned that at, at all yet. But they're not going to take any chances on this driver. Obviously, the driver uh, by now normally would have uh, thrown the keys out of the window and gotten out of the car. But sometimes we see these uh, turning into standoffs for hours and hours, even uh, in pursuits like this. That's good. That's really good news uh, to hear that because I wasn't sure. It sounded like it, it might have been uh, pretty serious. You're right, Michael. It was very aggressive, very desperate to get away, and to do that to other people, just ram them like that. I mean, you know that there's a, a row of cars in front of you. You know that in, in a vehicle this size, you're not going to be able to move very many of them, but still, trying to do that is just insane.
Yeah, it's unbelievable. When I first, when we first got on the scene, in fact, it was a, uh, a very short time uh, once we found the car that the uh, car tried to ram that SUV. Here you see in the video that we just shot just moments ago, look at how he just pushes through, even trying to, uh, at times, going airborne against the other vehicle. They're getting a tire up on the side of the car. It's just unbelievable that the driver would do that. Exactly. And thankfully, he's not in a bigger, like an SUV type, a heavier vehicle, because it could have been far worse. We never heard if there was uh, uh, people on board with the driver. I just saw some movement on the window. Let me come in here. I, they may have shot, uh, well, I'm not sure what that is. It might have been a pepper ball that they shot. Sometimes when the drivers don't comply and won't come out, they will try things like uh, putting in a, a pepper ball onto the car to get that spray in, into the windows and uh, try to make them come out. I don't know if that just happened or not. I just saw something move on the window. So. Uh, I don't want to go in too tight, but let me look real quick. And uh, there, I imagine there's got to be a, a canine unit in this mix somewhere. Uh, but right now, I, I don't see one on the ground unless I missed it. I don't see a, uh, a canine unit here in this, uh, at, at least in this group. Yeah, I, I think it might be a little too early for that. Uh, it just depends. Maybe the, the driver is in communication with the deputies, maybe on a dispatch channel, or maybe he's called 911. Maybe he's refusing. We don't know at this point. I did see something happen there to that side window. I, I just don't know. It looked like a splatter happened there. Uh, but uh, it does seem a little early for that. Absolutely. Let me, um, Michael, let me zoom in here, uh, use our doubler to get in tight. You see that one deputy right in the center? It looks like, yes, he's it may have just shot something. That yellow uh, handle on the uh, weapon there, that's uh, less lethal. That's probably the pepper balls. Well, and we'll see if they're hitting the cart. It looked like he just fired a round off. Yes, you see, so they're, they're putting in those pepper balls into the car right now to try to get that driver to come out, and we'll see if that's effective. Another one right, right there through the window. Yes. So they're definitely doing that. Uh, they want this driver to get out. They want him to surrender, and uh, he's refusing to do so, he or she. Uh, I would have been out on the first round. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a strong that's a strong smell. I mean it's very difficult. It gets in your eyes. It makes your nose run. Uh, you know, deputies are trained with that. They go through their their academy and they're put through experiencing those type of things. Uh, so it's not a pleasant experience. And uh, for them to put that many rounds into it, I'm surprised this, this person's not out yet. It's too dangerous, number one, uh, because of the way the driver was driving this driver. If the car is not uh, disabled, the driver could actually back into them at any time if it's still up and running. So they're going to be cautious with that. They could approach with shields and approach the car uh, if the driver's not responsive. Uh, they may do that. They may pull up another vehicle. But more likely than uh, not, they'll probably bring in a SWAT vehicle to get right in front and right behind the vehicle to, to not only block them in, but then to give them a, a better view of what's going on inside the car. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm sure they're on their way. I'm sure that they're uh, already en route. The, the question is, how long uh, will it take them? I can, I'm looking at the 60 freeway under us, and there is some traffic involved. So if they're going to take the freeway, that might take them some time. But uh, at this point, the driver not coming out with all those rounds going into it.
absolutely. They're very tinted, very dark. We can't see the driver, uh, and you know the only window would be the front, the windshield itself that you'd be able to see in. Yeah, it looks like they just keep pumping them in there, and they're going to probably keep doing that until the driver comes out. I'm seeing some movement there. Let me come in here and see. I'll do that very cautiously, but uh, you can see how many rounds there are in, in the side windows. It's just amazing. No, I, I think you're right, Carolyn, that uh, car, that door might be jammed. You might have to come out the passenger side. You know, I, I don't see it uh, happening on the on the passenger side. Let me see if, uh, well, there are some units in that gas station there, that Chevron. There is a unit there, but I don't see any uh, deputies uh, out there standing by the car. So if anything, maybe from the back, maybe from these two units here. Uh, but I'm trying to listen to the scanner right now. They're talking about movement inside the car. So uh, we'll see if uh, that driver's maybe trying to get out. Yeah. That's Absolutely, you see how many units just in this intersection here uh, alone, and, and then of course the responding units are coming in to assist, so uh, a lot of resources here to bring this driver in, into custody. I believe that, yes. Yes, that's that SUV I was talking about. He got right on his bumper, and then look at that. He just sideswiped him. No reason to do that. He wasn't trying to get out, uh, out of the way of any, any other vehicle. He just was upset, I guess, at that driver for driving slow or not moving for him and just did that. So that aggressiveness right away, I thought, boy, we're, we're in for a, a dangerous pursuit here when I saw that. It is. It's, uh, in fact, let me widen our shot here so you can get a better perspective of what we're looking at. There's the on-ramp, there's the freeway, and uh, just uh, to the right there is the uh, intersection where he came through and then it came to a stop. So uh, that's uh, Gentle Springs uh, dr and uh, Diamond Bar Boulevard is where that intersection is. And just north of there uh, is the 60 freeway. It was. In fact, when he when he approached through initially, he was eastbound on Grand, approaching the 71 freeway. I thought, oh, for sure he's going to jump on the freeway, but he didn't. He, he stayed, or she didn't. He, they jumped. Uh, they continued on the eastbound on Grand, and that's when a uh, short time after that, this car hit that S, that SUV in that in that lane. So, uh, all surface streets for the most part in this pursuit. And you're right, probably trying to get on that 60 freeway. Not in this case, so uh, I don't know, maybe the driver 
it has a mask maybe uh, again the other want for this driver was a, a, a suspected or possible DUI driver so there might be uh, an influence there that uh, is keeping this driver from being uh, affected by that. We've seen that in the, in the past where people might be on uh, certain drugs where they are just so hyped up that uh, stuff like this doesn't impact them. So we're just not sure yet. We haven't heard word from the, uh, uh, the deputies as far as uh, what's going on down there. Just monitoring the situation on the scanner up here and trying to get uh, some confirmation as to what's going on down there. Uh, we were en route from downtown LA to the chase. I did hear the uh, lead deputy talking about uh, what the want was for the vehicle when the airships were coming in to position. And they were telling the airship that uh, the want was for uh, the primary traffic collision with the uh, deputies in the city of industry. And then he, this driver at some point after that, shortly after that, collided with a second deputy, a sergeant, that was uh, in trail or in pursuit. I'm not sure how that happened. I'm not exactly sure uh, at what point that happened, but they, they did mention that on the scanner. And then they mentioned the fact that uh, the driver might be uh, possibly under the influence. So those were the factors initially when the pursuit uh, began and made its way all the way on Grand Avenue into the, uh, Chino, through the Chino Hills, into Chino, and then now back here to Diamond Bar. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, when we when we arrived, Michael, it was just before the driver hit that white SUV and kind of sideswiped him. And by that point, it was actually several minutes before that that they pulled off the ground units and went into surveillance mode. So from that point on until just uh, before it came to an end here, maybe five or or so minutes, that's when the all the units re-engaged and then tried those pit maneuvers uh, several times and almost were successful on that one where he spun them out into the double yellows. I imagine so. Uh, you know, the so far the attempts here to put in some uh, pepper balls into the car hasn't worked, and so the next step is going to be to bring in that uh, those SWAT vehicles. Make sure they the car is blocked. They'll, they'll pull in a unit uh, in the front and then in the back of it to secure it so it doesn't move. And then at that point, the uh, the deputies in that SWAT vehicle will be able to look into the windows and and see what's going on with the driver. And uh, they will also try to attempt to, to even talk to the driver. Uh, but at one point, they might even try to send in a, a canine. The problem is the, the windows are all up, and uh, there's no access for that canine to get in. They, we've seen in the past where, uh, you know, officer or deputies will walk up and smash out a side window and put the dog in. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, again, a lot of traffic right now on the eastbound 60 freeway as uh, there's no accident or anything. I think they're all looking at the helicopters overhead, uh, and that might be slowing things down for deputies to get here.
Yeah, exactly. I, I, I saw some movement here. These deputies were, uh, it looked like they were signaling maybe to the driver, waving at something. Maybe they were waving at someone in the background. Uh, it's hard to say. There are uh, a, a group of people here uh, in the Chevron parking lot, very close, in fact. In fact, you see the deputies trying to shoo them away right now. They're just a little too close to the scene, but a lot of people coming out of their cars. Maybe some of those people were uh, the innocent victims that were struck by this car in this intersection just before it came to a stop. Boy, when I saw that car go up onto the, I guess it would be the side of one of the cars, I'm just, I was just amazed by that, uh, the fact that this driver would just hit the gas like that and put all those people in danger. It just really speaks to this, this person's uh, attempts to get away. But in the process, he, it looks like he's disabled his own car. No, uh, well, I, I don't know if they followed it or uh, came in, into this area after the fact. Maybe they're just finding out. But I did pull out wide after he hit that car, and at that intersection, this red car kept going straight. That white SUV or silver SUV made a uh, looked like he kind of made a right turn at that intersection, and I, I lost track of him from that point. So, yeah, I'm not sure if they uh, – I'm sure they called the police and let him know, and they probably uh, put him in touch with the sheriff's department. I think a little bit of both, yeah, for sure. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant the initial one where he sideswiped them. Yeah, that that SUV there in the in the screen there, uh, that one just drove off. Let me come out wide and see if it pulled uh, up beyond the freeway while we have time. I don't know if it uh, just left or came, maybe came back. I don't see it over here. Uh, that <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for the delay. Hey, Freva, we have uh, about an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, we're good.
It doesn't appear to be the case. I'm going to come out wide again and show you the uh, freeway there. It's the 60 freeway on the left-hand side and kind of trapped between the 60 freeway and that intersection there at uh, uh, right behind him, Gentle Springs is it called. But I don't see any uh, movement yet as far as uh, any SWAT vehicles that are coming into play in this, but they're just pretty much have cleared out the uh, gas station of the people that were standing there watching. And it looks like they were trying to move deputies around a little bit, but for the most part, it's still uh, about the same as it was before. Yeah, much safer distance, I would say, and uh, they're going to keep those people away from this entire area. We just don't know what uh, is going to happen with that driver and the, anybody else that might be in there. I still haven't seen uh, a canine unit here, so we'll, we're waiting to hear and see if that, we see that asset come into play and still waiting on those uh, SWAT vehicles to come in. Thank you. Uh, understood.
looking at Carolyn and Michael. I've been looking for or waiting for any sight of that uh, the SWAT vehicles that may be in route here. So far, nothing. Uh, they might be impacted by the the. The 60 freeway with uh, heavy traffic eastbound on that, but uh, I would imagine they would uh, go around a different direction to get here uh, as soon as they can. But at this point, no, there has not been any movement in the car. The sheriff's uh, units that are behind it and around it uh, have really basically stayed the same. Their position is holding the same. We have not yet seen a canine unit arrive yet. So that's, uh, the scene is pretty static here. I haven't seen any more activity as far as uh, firing any of those uh, pepper balls or bean bags uh, into the car at this point and it looks like uh, at this point the car is not going to be able to move it appears to be disabled which is actually good news for anybody that was around this when it was happening uh, the driver here uh, disabling his own vehicle by ramming other cars so at this point it's just a standoff uh, and we'll see what happens next with the uh, deputies involved Yeah, I believe so. I mean, I certainly would. I would park nearby and make sure that I would talk to the uh, deputies and officers that were involved here to show them and, and, and give them my uh, uh, ex explanation of what I experienced. So I believe there are uh, some of those cars still there. In fact, maybe even the uh, cars here along, maybe that truck. I, I don't remember that, that truck there, but um, definitely some of these vehicles that are parked here look like they uh, are waiting. Exactly. Okay. I am. I'm with you, looking into the window there. I did. It looked like there was some movement through the holes. I, it was hard to tell. It might be that the the glass itself might be pretty fragile there. The driver's uh, window. It might be uh, moving in the wind a little bit. So that might be the movement that we're seeing. But uh, again, still very much uh, static scene here with the uh, deputies trying to figure out what the next step is.
No, it looks like it's jammed for sure. So the, the only way out is uh, either through a window or the other side, possibly that back door, but on the driver's side might be uh, functioning, but it's hard to say. There, We've seen zero movement uh, whatsoever here uh, for the uh, people or person or persons in the car the, to get out. And you know that uh, when, they're, when they come to a stop like this, the deputies are gonna call for that driver to throw out the keys and to open the door and, and get out. So they, we know they've gone through those steps and uh, the next thing they did was the uh, rounds through the window. Yeah, let me come out wide again and show you it's, uh, this intersection is completely shut down. A full wide shot shows you the 60 freeway and uh, to the uh, would be the north side. Uh, I don't see any movement up here. I think that's where we have our ground shot. Uh, it's a really good shot uh, down the street to look at the, the red car there. So, so far, no, I have not seen any more uh, units that have arrived here. It's pretty much locked down right now. Okay.
Let me look around a little bit better for you and, and get a better idea. I'll look up uh, southbound on Diamond Bar, Bar Boulevard. Really no activity there. I mean, they have it shut down way back here. This is at uh, Golden Springs. So they have uh, this whole uh, area here, this whole strip, all the way to the 60 freeway shut down. So, and I keep looking from time to time out the window at the 60 freeway to see if I see any of those SWAT units come in this direction, and I have yet to see that. So uh, I'm anticipating maybe they'll come off the freeway here, off the off-ramp. Uh, that might be very convenient for them to just pull up right in front of the car, but so far uh, no sign of them yet. Okay. Thank you. Michael, yeah, I'm listening to the scanner traffic. It's pretty quiet, actually. It sounds like it's just uh, in standoff mode with this uh, 
driver, and we're waiting to see if that uh, SEB team, the SWAT team, comes in with their vehicles to uh, try to bring this to a peaceful end. But so far, really, it's a, a static scene here with deputies posed there at the ready with their weapons. As I come out wide, you'll see the uh, Chevron station at the corner there that people have since left or moved back away from the scene from there. So again, that's pretty much the changes going on down here right now as I speak.
Carolyn, yeah, we're seeing the movement of the vehicles, the canine unit arriving, uh, several more members of the uh, SEB, the uh, Special Enforcement Bureau team, that's the uh, equivalent of the SWAT team for the Sheriff's Department. The vehicle still has not moved. We have not seen any movement inside the vehicle or doors opening. I can tell you that the uh, officers or deputies that were taking position here, they've pulled back from that uh, vehicle and they have uh, retreated a little bit there and they're in a, a, some sort of a circle or meeting there and uh, determining what the next step uh, in this process. The uh, street remains uh, closed down in both directions at the 60. This is Diamond Bar Boulevard and you see uh, all the units there in uh, the rear. So we're still just waiting for those uh, SWAT vehicles to arrive and it, uh, it appears that they were setting up for exactly that for the units to come in, a uh, SWAT vehicle to come in from the back and possibly from the front as well to uh, make sure this car is secure and then they can work from that point on. There's movement.
Okay, thank you. I do copy, Jack. Copy all.
Hey, they might make a move on the car. I'm hearing that they might, they're forming an arrest team. Through the show, understood, thank you. All right. We got movement with the Bearcat coming in. Tim, tell me how this looks when I zoom in here. Is it light enough? All right, now that they moved in, we gotta scoot a little close. No, not left, just just down the street. Right there. Hold it right there, yeah. Hey, uh, Jack and Jamie, they're calling the driver she. Have you been hearing that? Simon Des from Bravo on the microwave.
Hey, Jamie, have you heard on the scanner or have you heard any information that this is a female driver? They're, they're calling, I'm listening to their TAC channel and they're calling it, calling the driver her. her she's reaching in, she's in the center, to, center console. Are you hearing that at all from anybody? Okay.
You're good. You're good, you're good. Are we into the wind? It's making the picture bumpy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. We're moving forward a little bit. Can you back it up just a hair?
I do hear you, yes. And 615, okay, thank you. I got my doubler in, uh, Tim, and uh, I'm at 33 gain. That's 36. Okay, thank you. Two minutes. I'm going to talk this time. Thank you. Sounds good. 45 or less. One minute, thanks. Thir 30 seconds. Let's hold it right there. That's good. Carolyn, you're looking at the SWAT team has moved in their vehicles in the front and in the rear of the car as I zoom in here. I can tell you that the driver has been very active inside the car. In fact, I'm going to push in. You see uh, what looks like uh, the arms and legs of the driver moving around in the seat, reaching into the back seat, laying down at times. As I come in a little closer, you'll see better activity there, just kind of moving around in the seat. Now the SWAT team is in close proximity, and they are able to see exactly what that driver is doing. At this point, just moving around like we, like I said, and uh, waiting for their next move on this vehicle. That's the latest in News Chopper 4 Bravo. I'll send it back to you in the studio.
Thank you. We move forward, let's move back. I do see it, yeah. Okay, sounds good, yes. Okay, sounds good, 20 to 30. The driver's throwing some papers in the into the front. There goes uh, some detergent bottles. Hey, Jack and Jamie, you might want to mark tape there. Items being tossed around in the car. And l laundry. Basket of laundry. Okay. Copy that. 30 seconds to time. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Copy.
know what they're doing. Stand by one. Oh. <coughs> no. Hey, Jack, are you hearing that information? Jamie, are you guys hearing that information? Hey, Jamie or Jack, uh, did you copy that information? Jack, it's a female driver. She was admitted in the hospital last week. They are talking about it on ATAC-1, if you want to rewind it to hear that. Sheriff's Air ATAC-1. Yeah, uh, I want to make sure I can say it. They were dealt, saying it over the uh, scanner system. It's a female driver. Female driver was admitted to the hospital last week. Yes. Okay. Fifteen and a wrap. Okay, thank you.
Okay, will do. Thank you. Chuck and Carolyn, we're hearing information now from the sheriffs over the scanners that they believe this is a female driver. They were talking about her, that she was admitted to the hospital last week. We've seen the driver go into the rear of the car. I'm going to come in a little tighter and see what you see there. A basket of laundry and some other items that the driver's been throwing out of the window and up into the front seat of the car. So right now she's really hunkered down in the back seat and the sheriff Sheriff SWAT team is here trying to get her out. That's the very latest in News Chopper 4 Bravo, and I'll send it back to you in the studio. There goes more items right there. More items. So you see movement there out of the driver's window. Uh, so the driver still in the back seat, like I said, but what we saw her laying down at times across into the back seat, and that window now, the driver's window, is fully open. No dog yet, they were talking about the dog, but the SWAT team has the car surrounded in the front and in the rear, and right now she's throwing items out of the window. We see the debris there on the ground. So again, the driver just really hunkered down, barricaded in that back seat, and at times throwing items out of the car. Okay, thank you. Are you hearing all this? Assignment desk from Bravo. Jack, more information coming out. She uh, has a nine-year-old child. They are not able to locate that nine-year-old child. Uh, she has custody of that nine-year-old child and uh, last known address was a hotel or motel in Claremont. Okay, Jack.
Yeah. Just a little bit. You don't have to go too far. Yeah, hey, uh, Jack and Jamie from Gill. Uh, are we str are we streaming? I'm sorry, did you say yes? Okay, Jack, thank you. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us on NBCLA. This is Gil Levis in these chopper four Bravo over the termination of a pursuit. You see the SWAT team, that's the LA County Sheriff's special, I'm sorry, the uh, SWAT team's SEB unit. It's the uh, Special Enforcement Bureau that's moving in. It's their equivalents of the SWAT team. They are moving into position a third vehicle to, uh, com to nearly completely surround this vehicle. We are hearing now that the driver of this pursuit vehicle is a female, and she has basically barricaded herself in the rear seat of this car. You see the SWAT team vehicle coming in really tight there on the driver's side and will be blocking from now three sides of the vehicle. The driver has been throwing items out of the driver's side window. And we're just learning that the driver has been hospitalized last week unknown, for un, an unknown condition. And in the last 15 minutes or so, we saw movement of the driver. I'm going to come in a little tighter to show you a basket of laundry that's been put into the, uh, in between the front seats of the car. We saw detergent bottles being thrown up there and a lot of papers being thrown out the window of the car by the driver. So at this point, SWAT is now on three sides of the vehicle. Again, this all started with uh, the red car there in the center of your screen, the driver hitting a LA County Sheriff's deputy vehicle in the city of industry and the pursuit started at that point uh, on surface streets made its way all the way into Chino where the driver hit other vehicles about nine we counted in total during the chase ending here at uh, Diamond Bar Boulevard just south of the 60 freeway that driver ending up ramming a bunch of cars that were stopped at the intersection real close to this location almost trying to drive over the other cars that were blocking her way.
you're seeing the SWAT vehicles making uh, minor adjustments here as they get really tight on the car. Sheriffs are also concerned about a nine-year-old child that the driver has custody of. Now, we don't know if that nine-year-old is in the car or not, but they're saying that the nine-year-old, uh, they're unable to contact or get a hold of anyone that knows the whereabouts of that nine-year-old child. So that is definitely a concern for the uh, sheriff's SWAT team here as they try to bring this to a peaceful end. Again, the driver barricaded herself in the back seat of the car now. No more movement that we've seen other than items being tossed out of the driver's side. They're going to make an announcement to ask the driver to exit the vehicle from the passenger side now. We'll see if that happens. There was damage to the driver's side during those collisions of the cars that she was ramming. It uh, made it look like the door was not able to open, at least the driver's side door. So. I can tell you that two deputies were injured. LA County Fire Department reporting that two deputies were injured in that initial hit and run by this driver. Those deputies were taken to the hospital and uh, being checked out right now. It sounds like uh, their injuries are non-life threatening. As I pull out here, you see how the SWAT team has maneuvered the car, their vehicles into position around the car. The SWAT team has really good visual on the driver now, saying that she's actually laying down, possibly underneath that basket of laundry, laying down on her stomach, laying towards the back, and moving around a little bit. So they're trying to see exactly what she's doing in there. see right now some activity. Let's stand by here and see what they're going to do. see items there being tossed to the front seat from the back towards the uh, driver's window which is all blown out now 
There's movement again. There's movement, there's the driver moving around, grabbing stuff from the front seat. Definitely now in the back seat, fully in the back seat, trying to barricade that driver's side with clothes and items that she's tossed from the back to the front. That window's fully open, and this driver just not willing to participate or uh, or do what the uh, deputies want her to do. And this is exactly what they don't want her to do: is barricade herself even further inside that car.
Are we alone? Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. I see those guys. There it goes, there goes some movement on the driver's side again, throwing out items out the window. It looks like items, uh, it looks like clothing being thrown out the window, pushing them out. Good, right where we're at.
We're seeing a SWAT team member next to the car. Driver in the back seat. Chris, hold it right here. Let's not go any further forward. Here comes some tear gas. They're going to put tear gas into the car right now. That's being deployed into the car now. You see the car is starting to fill up with that gas. You mark tape. Completely filling the cab with that tear gas. A lot of tear gas being poured in there. As I come out to a wider shot, you see how the uh, gas is blowing in the wind there. They put it right through the driver's side window. Gas still pouring into the car. That's tear gas. We might see the driver come out that passenger side of the car. Still no movement. It's unbelievable to see how much gas they poured into this. This is a tear gas into the car that they just deployed and still no movement. Still in the back seat, moving around. They're saying, here comes the door popping open finally. And out comes the driver. The driver, she's had enough. She's going to walk over to the curb. 
and they're going to be taken into custody right there. Oh, you know what? That might be a child. It, that might have been the nine-year-old child. And out comes the driver. So uh, the door pops open and a young child comes out, walks to the curb and the deputies come up to her right away, pick her up. Because of her angle, it was hard to tell if it was just a small person or a small adult or if that was a child when he picked her up. I'm like, that's a child. Now there's the driver that they had to pull out of the vehicle. They're looking into the vehicle right now to make sure there's nobody else inside there. A lot of items inside the car that they're going to have to go through. But here's the driver out now and in custody, handcuffed and walking away. She endured a lot of gas there all that time. The child finally coming out and then deputies going in and pulling her out. It's unbelievable, this uh, standoff that's been going on for several hours now. And the driver being sat down on the back seat of the, or the back uh, tailgate of the SWAT vehicle. Yeah. We're going to move our position to get a better look at that. But uh, right now, it appears that this situation, the standoff after this uh, pursuit and uh, several hour standoff is come to an end with the Sheriff's Department deploying the uh, tear gas and the woman being taken uh, into custody. Oh, no, no, no. We have a running. Oh, this is going to be close. To watch more heart stopping car chases happening across Southern California, subscribe here. Thanks for watching. The chase is on.